part three chapter five of a vital question or what is to be done by nikolai chernyshevsky translated by nathan haskell dole eighteen fifty two to nineteen thirty five and others this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part three marriage and second love chapter five and thus three years have passed since the union was founded and more than three years since vira pavlovna's marriage how quietly and busily passed these three years how full they were of calmness happiness and all that was good vira pavlovna after waking long takes her ease in bed she likes to take her ease and as it were to doze and yet she does not doze but she thinks of what must needs be done and so she lies not dozing and not thinking yes she is thinking how warm soft good how comfortable it is to sleep in the morning and so she lies and takes her ease until from the neutral room no we must say from one of the neutral rooms there are two of them now because it is the fourth year of their wedded life her husband that is her milenki says virotchka are you awake yes milenki that is as good as to say that her husband may begin to make the tea in the morning it is his work to make the tea and that vira pavlovna no in her room she is not vira pavlovna but virotchka may dress herself how long it takes to dress herself no it does not take her long one minute but she plays long with the water she likes to splash in it and then she takes considerable time with her hair no she does not take very much time for it she arranges it in a minute but she trifles with it because she likes her hair however sometimes she is long busy with one of the important stages of her toilette putting on her shoes she wears elegant shoes she dresses very simply but shoes are her passion and here she comes out to tea kisses her husband how did you sleep milenki she talks with him at table about different trifles and serious things however vira pavlovna no virotchka because at morning tea she is still virotchka drinks not as much tea as cream tea is only pretext for cream she has more than half a cup of it cream is also her passion it is hard to find good cream in petersburg but virotchka manages to find the best that there is without any adulteration she dreams of having her own cow well if business improves as it has been doing it can be realized in a year's time but now it is ten o'clock milenki goes off to give his lessons or to business he is employed in the office of a manufacturer vira pavlovna now she is vira pavlovna again until the next morning looks after the house she has one servant a young girl whom she has to teach everything and after you have taught her it is necessary to break in a new one vira pavlovna does not keep her servants long they all get married within a half year or a little more you will see vira pavlovna working on a collar or a pair of cuffs preparing herself to be the bride's nuptial godmother here it is impossible to refuse how is it possible to do otherwise vira pavlovna you have made all the arrangements yourself there is no one besides you yes there is a great deal of care about the house then it is necessary to go and give her lessons she has a good many pupils about ten hours a week more would be too hard and she would not have any time before the lessons it is necessary to stop in the shop for a little while and on her way home she has to look in once more and then comes dinner with the milenki at dinner they almost always have company one more often two more than two is impossible when they have two to dinner it is necessary to do extra work to prepare a new dish so as to have enough if vira pavlovna feels tired when she gets home dinner is made more simple she sits till dinner-time in her own room resting and the dinner is put on as it was begun without her help but if she is not tired affairs in the kitchen begin to boil and steam and extra dishes appear at dinner some baked dish but more often something that can be eaten with cream that is something that will serve as an excuse for cream at dinner vira pavlovna asks questions and tells about things more often she tells stories and how can she help telling them how much news she has to tell about the shop after dinner she sits a quarter of an hour longer with the milenki then comes good-bye and they each go to their own room and vira pavlovna lies down on her little bed and takes her ease and reads and very often she falls asleep more often than not 
Every other day she takes a nap for an hour or an hour and a half. This is a weakness, and it is a weakness of a low character. But Vi^ra Pavlovna sleeps after dinner when she can get a nap, and she likes to go to sleep, and she feels neither shame nor regret for this low-toned weakness. She then gets up after sleeping or lounging for an hour or two, dresses and goes again to the shop, and remains there till tea-time. If they do not have company in the evening, then at tea she has another talk with the Milenki, and for half an hour they sit in the neutral room. Then it is, good-bye, Milenki, they kiss each other and part till breakfast. Now Vi'ra Pavlovna sometimes works or reads or rests from reading by playing on the piano till very late, even till two o'clock she has a grand piano in her room the grand was bought not long ago hitherto their piano was rented this also was a great happiness to own their own grand it was cheaper too it was bought at a bargain for a hundred roubles a small ererovsky second hand it cost seventy roubles to have it put in order but the grand was of an excellent tone sometimes the milenki comes to hear her sing but only seldom he is too busy thus goes the evening work reading playing singing but reading and singing most of all this is when they do not have company but very often they have visitors generally young people younger than the milenki and younger than vi'ra pavlovna herself their number includes the instructors of the shop they esteem lopukhov very highly they consider him one of the best minds in petersburg and perhaps they are not mistaken and their tie to the lopukhovs consists in this they feel that it is profitable for them to talk with dmitri sergeitch to vi'ra pavlovna they show immense respect she even allows them to kiss her hand not feeling that it is any degradation to herself and she behaves towards them as though she were fifteen years their senior that is she behaves herself in such a way when she does not get into a gale but to tell the truth she very often gets into a gale she likes to run to frolic with them and they are all delighted and there is a great deal of dancing and waltzing a great deal of simple running about a great deal of playing on the piano a great deal of talking and laughter and probably more singing than anything else but the running laughter and everything else does not in the least prevent the young people from absolutely and entirely and boundlessly worshipping vera pavlovna from respecting her as may god grant respect for an older sister as a mother not even a good mother is not always respected however singing is not frolicking though sometimes one cannot get along without the nonsense but for the most part vi'ra pavlovna sings seriously and sometimes when she does not sing she plays seriously and her hearers then sit in dumb silence not infrequently they have guests who are older or who are of the same age as the lopukhovs for the most part lopukhovs former classmates or friends of his former comrades two or three young professors almost all bachelors almost the only married people are the mertsalovs the lopukhovs do not very often go out and they go scarcely anywhere else than to the mertsalovs or to mrs mertsalovs parents these kind and simple-hearted people have a good many sons who occupy important places in all possible official departments and therefore at the house of the old people who live in some comfort vi'ra pavlovna sees a varied and different calibred society free ample active life not without its luxuries lying at ease in her soft warm bed cream or baked dishes in cream it is a life that greatly delights vi'ra pavlovna can there be any better life in the world to vi'ra pavlovna it seems impossible well in early youth nothing better can be imagined but years pass on and with the years things improve if life goes on as it should as it goes on with the few now as it will pass with a good many in the future end of part three chapter five recording by expatriate in bangor maine